At the end of the day, people were really talking together. Kind of, let's say, adventures. It's the first time in Cambodia I work with a specialist of pesticide. Uh, there are some challenges that we cannot predict. <laughs> Very exciting as well to, to try to do it. Keep connection of the member. From uh, water to, uh, to health. Like other large rivers, the Mekong and its tributaries have an unpredictable behavior and can cause significant damage, including physical destruction, agricultural losses, and loss of life. Furthermore, the rainy season brings an extended period of seasonal flooding, which generates beneficial farming conditions for soil fertility and agricultural productivity. This is particularly evident in Cambodia's upper delta with its vast natural floodplains. Intensifying agriculture is now a major challenge for Cambodia's economic growth. Hence, development agencies have invested significantly in rehabilitating and establishing irrigation systems, such as the traditional PREC system. These artificial canals are several meters wide and extend for several kilometers running perpendicular to the main course of the river. They penetrate the elevated riverbanks and link with the floodplains. Initially, their purpose was to facilitate the accumulation of sediments in the alluvial plains, transforming swampy lowlands into arable terrain. During the wet season, these canals transport sediment to the floodplain and accelerate the drainage of water as the flood subsides. During the dry season, they represent a valuable source of water for supplementary irrigation. The impact of these developments and their management practices on flooding, soil and water quality, and ultimately the health of the population, has been the subject of study for the Watt Health Project team over the past two years. The project engaged numerous researchers from diverse scientific disciplines, merging environmental and health science alongside extensive fieldwork. We are going to I'm the coordinator of the Waters project and I'm managing the team, the activities and also the budget. So the, the irrigation system allows the farmers to manage the gates and to control the water that comes into the floodplain. At the same time, we know that the climate change also has an impact on the Mekong River flow regime. And we also know that uh, the management of the dam upstreams are regulating the peak flow during uh, the flood period. So the question is, all this increased water control may have some effect on the duration of the flooding period by reducing potentially the duration of this period and reducing also the water level and probably postpone the first flood uh, in this region. For example, in 2020, the flood was very short and much lower than usual, and it had an impact on the rodent population, but also on the agriculture by bringing less soil and less sediment and less fertilizers. Built upon all these observations, the project has raised crucial inquiries regarding environmental transformations and their potential impacts on human health. People like uh, the farmer here, they have questions like uh, what uh, is the, our contribution? They thought that I thought that I thought that I We 
We decided to structure the project in two parts. So the first part was really to characterize the hazards we identified in the field. So mainly the waterborne pathogens and the vectors like mosquitoes, but also the pollutants coming from the agriculture intensification. And for that, the first part of the project was to make a state uh, of the environmental uh, condition regarding those hazards. So I'm Mallory Day from Mivej Unit and I'm the coordinator of Bacteria Work Package. The Bacteriology Work Package uh, concerns waterborne uh, bacteria and especially uh, Leptospira, which is responsible for Leptospirosis, and Burkordaria pseudomaleae which is uh, responsible for meliodosis. I am Mayn Soda, a senior technician in uh, medical biological uh, laboratory to uh, study about leptospirosis. We don't have studied before. It's uh, a good knowledge to, uh, to learn because uh, here we don't have uh, this technique. In this project, it is uh, uh, interesting to, to see like uh, because uh, this area it is uh, intensive agriculture, so people use a lot of uh, pesticide. So we expect like uh, there is a content of uh, pesticide in the break water in the right field. My name is Sébastien Boyer, I am a medical entomologist and I'm working at Institut Pasteur du Cambodge. For what else project, we go to the field every month and every month we catch different species of mosquitoes to understand how the flooding influences the distribution and the density of the mosquitoes. Generally, we catch several hundreds or several thousands of mosquitoes and after we have to identify one by one morphologically using the microscope. The huge difference of abundance of mosquito we have between the dry season and the rainy season and contrary with what we think during the rainy season we have very very less mosquitoes due to the flooding compared to the dry season which was not expected for me and a counterintuitive totally yeah. we have uh, isolated and identified this bacteria in both water and soil during uh, over 15 months and in 22 different uh, sites that we usually work in the lab in, with molecular tools and especially in a biological sample from human or animals. And here we have to set up all the field sampling, which is uh, new for this laboratory, for uh, medical laboratory and for Mizejek as well. So uh, it was quite difficult at the beginning because sometimes we have to work under the sun, sometimes we have to use the boat. Home, it was not expected to find um, so many bacteria because we found it quite often, not depending on the site or the weather. It seems that uh, they are they still here, hidden somewhere. Uh, very exciting as well to you know, to try to do it. It was a funny field sampling. The second part of the project was to define how the people are exposed to these different hazards. I am Ratha. I am a researcher and lecturer at the ITC. So in particular project, I involved in flood dynamics components. So here in this irrigation system, there's not only agriculture, but people are using the canals for leisure. They are using for food and for fishing. So the question was, is there the threat regarding the water quality and the diseases related to this change of flood dynamics? So we want to figure out uh, where the water is coming from and where it's going. Does it flow into the canal system or does it interact with the groundwater? And this has huge impact on the different uh, pollutant transfers. We try to measure the water levels to figure out the different uh, water flow direction. 
And we also use chemistry for water tracing. So to figure out what is the age of the water, is this water coming from the flood or it's there for a long time and where it's coming from, it's infiltrate from the surface or if it's groundwater flow transfer. My name is Eve Biropin, I am an anthropologist and I have been studying the relationship between pesticides and the human beings, especially the way these chemicals transform the human beings and their relation to the world. The main challenge of the fieldwork was to collect pesticides without generating more chemical exposure to people. My name is Mila Kana and right now I'm working in a World Health Projects and I am a research assistant in that project and we are working on the pesticide uh, residual in this project. A very exciting project and very useful because uh, we can know the relationship between the flood dynamic and the pesticides. Uh, right now we are collecting a sample from uh, along the bridge. Sometimes it, uh, it hard and but at the same time we enjoy in doing it too. My name is Jean-Philippe Venot. I am an agronomist and a human geographer by training, but my research is about water management and water policies. In the context of the Water Health Project, I have more specifically studied uh, the practices of farmers in using pesticides and as well as the distribution chains of pesticides, that is, all farmers source the product that they are using from input sellers and other uh, intermediaries. My name is Reitou. I'm a research assistant. Uh, currently, I'm working for uh, Ecoland Research Center, Royal University of uh, Agriculture. We try to understand about the people's perception on the uh, pesticide. It's not only the type of pesticide that they are apply on their crops, but also their perception about the um, a pollution of the pesticide or the toxics of the pesticide on the environment or to the water's quality and also to their health. I think one of the main surprises for me of this project is maybe uh, the quantity of pesticides uh, that we have identified as being used. We also collect the pesticide that the farmer are using and it's very hard to ask them to keep their MT bustol or pesticide that Abster using. It was very significant and I really didn't expect uh, this diversity of product but also this complexity of the distribution chain of pesticides. To me it's a bit hard because working at the field uh, there are some challenges that we cannot predict. <laughs> we can solve the problem together. One of the main achievements of the Water Health Project, and it was also one of its objectives, was to create a platform to initiate a discussion between researchers in environmental science and researchers in uh, the health science. I am Vincent Boto, I am a researcher at IRD. In uh, Water Health Project, we were in charge of uh, several activities. The main one for us was to realize a serological uh, survey in uh, Kotum district, in the study area. A serological survey is uh, we look in the blood, we take a blood sample from the people to look if they have an immune response uh, to these bacteria, if they have been exposed to these bacteria. It's very interesting to work with the health geographer since we provide raw data from the field and uh, they are able to uh, better understand. It was a great experience to, to work also in a, in a small area uh, where we try to understand every component from uh, water to, uh, to health. We're really working smoothly with each other because we understand each other and we are really responsible. It was a real pleasure to train the Cambodian colleague to ethnographic methods. It's really rare to find such a motivated person to go to the field, listening to the people without judging, without setting any hierarchy between farmers and researchers. We are happy to, to involve and to contribute to the, our local people and also the Cambodian government.
I am uh, Chuan Kong. I'm working for IDC, Institute of Technology of Cambodia. I'm working as the Dean of the Faculty of Hydrology and Water Resources Engineering. It was also important to mobilize uh, this project for increasing the analytical capacity of analysis in Cambodia. For me, I think that the project gave me a lot of experience and uh, especially on the microbiology that we is the, uh, the one that I'm very interested in. Uh, we increased the capacity building with different uh, equipment for molecular biology uh, and for field sampling. Yes, uh, for me, the project gives me a lot of benefits. For example, it gave me the background of the research ability for pursuing higher education, for example, the PhD or master degree. The uh, project uh, gave me the, the idea to purchase my PhD to continue the, the another project. We have been able to train several students, either in Cambodia or in New Caledonia as well, for the serological tools. Stay there is uh, and, uh, it's fun and uh, the training with a uh, technician or superior is uh, very uh, happy. Um, make uh, complete with uh, the technique, but uh, the knowledge is not yet complete. Uh, it should take uh, more time to learn the series. Yes, I enjoy it. My name is Chao Bo I am a master student in uh, Wat Project. So I learned a lot about the geophysics because it's new for me as uh, as an engineering student, I am the student that work, working only on the water quality assessment. Not to forget working with the student because they are producing a lot of uh, output uh, from data uh, retrieving from the field and then they can join analyzing and also publishing. And now I have another new challenge to study about the geophysics and I can know how to use the instrument such as EOT, TDM or suffer. What I learned is that we have a lot of background uh, from expertise uh, to the project and I learned that something I don't understand about the bacteria in the, 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 the crop as well. So it is very good opportunity for our staff and also for the student. This was actually a long journey because most of the people involved in the project were not used to work in the interdisciplinary way. So we really had to create those moments of discussions and to convince people that they had an interest in uh, having or in sharing their results and look at them in a different way. So uh, it can be improve our like, uh, knowledge that how both of them are correlated each others. Bacteriologists, hydrologists, anthropologists, geographers, uh, and all these people were not used to talk together. The knowledge that we can generate on pesticides, but also bacteria and vectors, and all they link with the hydrological dynamics can really be useful for the design and implementation of policies that can help uh, sustainable development uh, in, uh, in, in Cambodia. I am going to go to the house. I am we have not done that yet because we are in a first step of a data analysis and then we will uh, give the feedback to the ministry first. At the end of the project, I think the, the feeling of excitement uh, is still there because I think we have uh, really started a discussion. And what is as well very important is to continue this kind of study. So the three persons recruited on this project are still in the, in the unit, are still in the team, and now they, they even trained some new people arriving. The objective of this is that after the project, the Cambodian labs will be able to continue this environmental analysis. It's the second FSPI project we have, and it really uh, helps us to build a unit inside the Pasteur Institute. As one of the message for our team and all the members in the project that we have to work uh, very hard for this last year 
and keep connection all of the member lại nằm trong khu đây đây bảo chi à chi ở đây dân so nằm khu đây hay bảo ban mau chẳng chui mơ mơ vào kệ đúng rồi